100% affinity and white sharpness. Quick sheath level 3 and bludgeoner for the memes. Weakness exploit level 3 and blast explosions. What's up guys, Opadorf and Peppo here and welcome to another very exciting video. These are three extremely powerful longsword builds in Monster Hunter Rise, each with a budget and a pro version. So no matter how good your charms are, you will be able to make all of these three builds. Let's begin with this build, featuring the Deepest Knight, Nogakuga's high affinity longsword, with the Rampage skill attack boost level 3. With this build, we get to 100% affinity and white sharpness, precisely 30 hits of white and 70 hits of blue sharpness, so of course we use speed sharpening. It comes with these skills. Worth mentioning here is unlike in Monster Hunter World, where quick sheath barely made a difference, now it drastically speeds up the longsword normal sheathing, the round slash and also the special sheath animation. Specifically, level 3 speeds up the special sheath by 20 frames, that's a lot. We consider this skill a must have because it allows for a faster response to the monster's attacks, increases the hunter's attacks frequency and with that ultimately the DPS. Speed sharpening level 3 is a really good skill for many builds due to it being a single slot skill and there are not so many good options for single slots in Rise right now. This build only comes with critical boost level 2 because going for level 3 would mean we get rid of attack level 3 entirely, which leads to overall a tiny bit less effective raw. Keep in mind critical boost decorations don't exist, so it's a very difficult skill to make use of. Latent power comes automatically with these armor parts and is actually more useful now compared to world. Based on our tests, it seems to be the case that it activates 2 minutes after you are in combat and then lasts for 2 minutes the first time. For the second activation on the same quest, you need to stay in combat for 2 minutes and 25 seconds to activate the skill again and then it always lasts for 2 minutes. Lastly, Maximum Might is also a lot better for Longsword in Rise. While it works the same way as in World, now the Foresight Slash doesn't consume stamina anymore, so the skill is always active as long as you're not rolling. Here are the materials needed to craft the armor. We use the Zenogre Helm S, the Baryoth Mail S, Rathalos Braces S, Skalda Elutra S, here, Toxic Kumori you can get from the Buddy Submarines by farming certain specific items. And lastly, the Golden Hakama S. These are the decorations needed. Two Sheath Jewels, one Attack Jewel and three Grinder Jewels. For this build, we will be using Speed Sharpening Level 3. All the other single slots we will keep empty for you guys to use them however you prefer. It depends on your preference. We usually use one Flinch Free if we play in multiplayer. You could also use a defense boost for more safety or recovery speed if you are too lazy to heal like Peppo. Feel free to combine our base build with whatever charm you want, but in case you happen to have this one, congratulations, you got lucky. Now, this build features the same armor parts, but due to the charm we have 4 more level 2 slots. That allows us to have attack boost level 7 instead of level 3, which is a really significant damage increase. Attack level 7 is really strong in Rise due to its additional 10% attack multiplier. Moving on to the second build, this is the Nash Katana, and this build is vastly different. High raw, green sharpness, precisely 60 hits of green sharpness, and bludgeoner level 3, which is better in Rise compared to World because now it gives a whopping 10% attack multiplier. This longsword has an interesting rampage skill called Dulling Strike. From our tests, it seems there is a 10% chance to activate it, which increases the damage by about 20%. But if we calculate the effective raw, this leads to a lower value compared to attack boost 4. So we chose attack boost 4. The budget version comes with these skills. This time we max out maximum might. Without bludgeoner we could have had 90% affinity, but if we use bludgeoner level 3 with 65% affinity, we increase our effective raw by 2.7%. The other skills were explained in the previous build, so let's take a look at the armor parts. We use the Mosswine, uh, the Bullfango Mask, the Baryoth Mail and Vembraces S, the Skelda Elutra S and lastly the Golden Hakama. You need one mighty jewel, one blunt and one sheath. Again, use the five single slots however you prefer. You can make our pro build with this charm, but if you only have quick sheath level 1, that's also enough. Because due to the two Baryoth armor parts, we already have two points of quick sheath. So basically, one quick sheath and two level 2 slots are all that matters. 
As you can see, it comes with weakness exploit level 3 instead of level 2. That's why we need this in Nogre Helm and we will slot in all the bludgeoner because weakness exploit jewels don't exist at the time of making this video. And it also has one more level of latent power compared to the budget version. Our last extremely powerful longsword build features the Sinister Shade Sword made out of Magnum Malo materials and it is the only longsword in the game as of making this video which comes with natural blast element. Blast explosions look super cool in Rise and the DPS of this build is also quite good. Here we have 40 hits of blue sharpness and 90 hits of green. We use attack boost 3 as rampage skill. Without taking latent power into consideration, these skills get us to 85% affinity. This build has 6 single slots, so it's ideally to use for many additional skills like speed sharpening, flinch free, defense boost or recovery speed for example. This build is particularly good for rampage as it gives you more stronghold level because each blast explosion counts as a status proc and against minor rampage monsters you will get a lot of blast procs. It's also really good against monsters weak to blast like Great Baggy, Lagombi, Baroth and even Bazarios due to its low hit zones in normal mode. Here we use the Zenogre Helm S, the Baryoth Male and Vambraces S, Skalda Elytra S and Golden Hakama S. The decorations needed are one Mighty Jewel, one Sheath and one Attack. Now with this charm, or also just Quick Sheath level 1 and 2 level 2 slots, you can make our Pro build. These are the same armor parts as the budget version, but here we have attack boost level 4 instead of level 1, so a pretty nice increase in raw attack. We used the single slots here for speed sharpening, recovery speed and flinch free. And that brings us already to the conclusion. How do these three base builds compare when calculating their effective raw? Narga only has 30 hits of white sharpness, but we get to the highest effective raw of 351.1. Bone has 60 hits of green and has 340.3 effective raw, so that's only 3.1% less damage than Narga. Magnamalo has 40 hits of blue and an effective raw of 328.5 but with the additional blast procs. So it's hard to factor these explosions into the overall damage output because blast applies with a chance of 33% on every hit and the blast thresholds change for every monster, but not only that in Rise, explosion damage varies as well. Lastly, let's compare the damage output for our personal pro builds with the charms that we have. If you have this charm, then the Nagakuga Longsword build is extremely powerful because of how strong attack boost level 7 is in Rise. It reaches an effective raw of 384.9 which is 33.86 more than its budget version. The Bone Ellis Pro build is a little bit easier to make as you only need one level of quick sheath in your charm. It also has more hits of its max sharpness, in this case green with bludgeoner, but has a little lower overall effective raw, precisely 359.67, which is 6.5% less damage than the Pro Narga build. Lastly, the Magnamala Longsword with 40 hits of blue gets us to 350.32 effective raw plus its blast explosions. For all the builds shown in this video, we use these switch skills. Also, we use the Demon Paddlers 3 so that the Red Spear Burps gives us plus 4 raw attack. Alright, we hope these three builds gave you some inspiration or helped you out in case making builds is very difficult for you. There are currently no set builders available at the time of making this video, so we built these ourselves. But we did a lot of testing and damage calculation to make sure these builds are as good as possible. We couldn't feature elemental longswords here as it would have made this video much longer. But some elemental longswords are really good as well, so feel free to experiment yourself or watch our upcoming speedruns from Peppo for some more inspiration. We will also certainly get even better talismans in the future, which will allow us to update our build videos. So subscribe to the channel if you don't want to miss those. Lastly, here is just a friendly reminder that there are many ways to play this game and to experiment with different longswords and different builds, so make sure to be nice to everyone online regardless of what they're using. With that being said, we'll catch you in the next one. Peace.